politician, peacemaker or pragmatist. As protests rage on the streets of Baghdad, the country's most powerful cleric pulls his support. But will this embolden demonstrators or weaken their ranks? I'm Imran Gata and today's newsmaker is Iraqi Shia cleric Muqtada Sadr. He's a game changer in a country where the game is always changing and for the last 17 years has managed to remain a key power broker regardless of who else is actually in power. Even now, having recently orchestrated the ouster of the country's former prime minister, the legitimacy of the current prime minister designate lies in his hands. Muqtada Sadr has always managed to deftly move among the many tribes, parties and militias in Iraq, shifting allegiances with a kind of regular unpredictability. His most recent about-face has further inflamed tensions between those demanding political change and those wanting to keep the status quo. Meanwhile, on the streets of the capital, the crackdown on demonstrators continues. The numbers of those killed or kidnapped rises, while questions on exactly who is behind the violence remain. Adam Pletz has more. For almost two decades, cleric Muqtadr Sadra has played a pivotal role in Iraqi politics. Hailing from a prominent family of Shia clerics, he became a leading opponent of the US occupation following Saddam Hussein's removal. His militia, formerly known as the Mahdi Army, frequently fought US forces. And his political party, the Sandrus movement, is one of the largest in the Iraqi parliament. Over the years, he's gained a reputation as a kingmaker, frequently switching alliances. And it's been no different during Iraq's recent anti-government demonstrations. At times, Sadra's supporters have protected protesters from security forces and Iranian-backed militias. But the demonstrators are now denouncing Prime Minister-designate Mohammad Alawi, whose appointment Sadra supports. Last week, his followers attacked sit-ins, killing eight protesters in Najaf, after Sadra called on them to weed out saboteurs and intruders. Today, we took to the streets and student demonstrations to denounce the inhumane acts that took place in Najaf. Protests have continued, bolstered by support from Iraq's highest Shia authority, Grand Ayatollah Ali al-Sistani. It's the security forces that must take responsibility for keeping the peace, protecting the protest squares and peaceful demonstrators, and identifying attackers and rabble-rousers. At a time of transition in Iraq, with US forces possibly pulling out and widespread demonstrations, how much influence will Sadr have on the incoming government? And will he continue to shift allegiances? Adam Pletz, The Newsmakers. Well, joining me now to discuss this from Baghdad is Raid Jahid Fahmi. He's the, uh, Iraq's former Minister of Science and Technology and the Secretary General of the Iraqi Communist Party. Good to have you on the program, sir. These diehard blue hats, the Sadrists, are attacking people. They've killed eight. They're attacking people in multiple cities. Do you condemn it? Of course, we, we support the demonstration, we support, which has become an uprising, as a matter of fact, and they have legitimate rights, legitimate demands, and they are, they are a peaceful character, basically, major peaceful character. So any kind of attack against these demonstrations, a peaceful demonstration, is to be, is to, it should be condemned. And I think recently what happened, whether in Najaf and elsewhere, has been generally, uh, has been condemned by all, must people in general, public opinion, and many forces, including those who are there probably represent the people who usually support whether the Southern movement and others. Mm -hmm. And from within the Southern movement, we can see now tendencies and efforts to calm down and <clears throat> to uh, at least to, 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 to try uh, to, try to, uh, to, to appease uh, the tensions that, that arose over the past few days. And I, um, we are for appeasing things, but should be right. on, the, on, the, on the right basis, 
uh, yeah, they also should be respected. Right, And their right. lives should be respected as well. So we've had those deaths in Najaf. We've had attacks in Karbala, in Nasiriya. There are reports, credible reports, of people being tortured in Tahrir Square in Baghdad by Sadrists. I ask you, as somebody in coalition with the Sadrists in the Sairun Alliance, what kind of pressure are you putting on them? Are you telling them to their faces that this is wrong, you need to stop killing these protesters? No, I, I just make uh, just uh, something clear. As members of Sairun, as you know, we, uh, we resigned from the parliament. So uh, as, as an electoral, uh, electoral uh, alliance, is, it doesn't exist anymore because Certainly. we are not anymore but you, in, in you've the not parliament. Distanced yourself, you've yes. not distanced yourself as from an, them, right? You, you're still in some sort of political al alliance. They're not your enemies. As far as... Far right. the, as, as the, Yes, no, no, not enemies. Not enemies. As far as the political alliance, we agreed with the, with the, with Sairun on a certain number of principles and programs and so on, and we we respect these principles. Mm -hmm. But these principles are have not for the moment any kind of institutional framework to be applied with for the moment. And there is no reunions. There is no committees mm -hmm. which which are in the bylaws that we agreed upon. So you see, so now is as, as a matter of, as a matter of fact, the functioning of this alliance politics doesn't have the, the instrument. So we, re, we remain within the broad, broad lines. So within, within these lines, we express our views. We publish our communique with our, with our right. statement condemning what happened in whether in Najaf and elsewhere. And today we have certain contacts, and we are using these contacts in order to. Uh, to, to exert some kind of uh, escape pressure or convincing them that this is not should be a line, and we get some response from their part, oh. saying that they they are they are, they are stressing that they are still with the movement, but they, they, they are targeting what they call it intruders, saboteurs, or whatever. So of right. course we don't agree on the scale of uh, what they are saying, but we we use our whatever uh, lines of uh, contact we have them uh, to this effect. Right. You don't believe that the protesters are saboteurs, that they are inciting violence and so on. You do believe that they are broadly peaceful, yes? No, of course, broadly, this is a genuine movement. Huh? And we are saying to them, if you really say mm -hmm. That they are saboteurs or whatever intruders. Well, we have the list of all those who have been killed and who have been the martyrs. And you tell us, who among these people is really a saboteur? Mm -hmm. These are all young people who have no cont who have the, nothing, even right. poor. They, they 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 have nothing but uh, but their hands of from this. So and as, as if you know there are saboteurs, well, well, then identify them, identify them, and go get them. But you should not really label the whole movement as saboteur or whatever. Whatever this is, the, this is a kind of deforming the movement, and it's not acceptable. The essence of this movement is really, uh, expressing the demands of the people, the the, 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 the the grievances of our people, and these are huge right. grievances. So they are just demand, and everybody recognizes this. Even the the Marjai has recognized these are just demand. Them, they themselves, even the political parties, have recognized they are just demand. So reducing the the whole movement uh, to saboteurs or whatever, or intruders. This is not really. Uh, this is, it doesn't correspond to the facts. At right. Least. Those people. To the right. realities of the situation. Right. Those people on the streets. Um, they don't have clear leadership. Some would argue that they don't have any leadership. But it's. It, it is quite clear what they're against. They're against corruption. They want more jobs. They want basic sure. services and, and so on. And they're very anti-establishment. And now we have the announcement that the yes. Prime Minister designate, Mr. Alawi, is the next man to be given the job. He seems to be very yes. establishment when we look at his credentials. Why should the protesters trust Prime Minister Alawi? You see, uh, Mr. Prime Minister Alawi, as a person, as a person, he may be uh, genuine for his uh, what he he is uh, trying to achieve. But as you said, he emerged from the establishment. He was member, he's been, he's been a minister, he's been a member of parliament. And the process through which his candidacy has been brought forward is in itself uh, uh, doesn't 
uh, doesn't uh, indicate that he can do better than uh, than his predecessor, mm -hmm. uh, Abdel Mahdi. The, the same forces, the same way, uh, the same procedure that has been has designated uh, Abdel Mahdi has designated uh, uh, Alawi. People, therefore, people, they have no trust and they, they don't think that this, this kind of process will bring something different. One of the criteria, the major criteria that they put forward for any uh, designation, for the designation for any, for any person for the prime, minister, prime ministership is that should be independent from the political, uh, let's say, uh, the political forces who are in power. Because this independence will, will at least will give some kind of uh, guarantee, some kind of uh, guarantee that these forces will not uh, exercise their, their, uh, their influence on the prime minister and will limit his, um, his capacity to maneuver, or at least he should abide by their, uh, by, by their uh, instruction or by their right. commands. Uh, for the moment, the people have no have no uh, have no trust, and, and they don't believe that the prime minister designate can get away from the influences of the major forces. And these major, and these uh, political forces have no interest really in bringing change, in in fighting corruption, or even preparing for early election, anticipated election, as everybody as now everybody calls for. Is it clear to you that there was a deal made in Qom? as they were thrashing out what to do, where Muqtada Sadr was told, you've got to put down the protests and you also have to back Mr. Alawi. This is part of the machinations that were taking place in Qom and it might have had Tehran's influence. Is that your understanding of things? No. Well, you have read about this and we have information about this kind of... Uh, uh, this accord that is supposed to have been done has been realized and come. So I, I don't know whether it is completely true what has been said. At least, but we we start off from analysis. We take this into consideration, and we saw the, uh, the events and what the position taken, whether by Sadr or by others, over the past uh, few, uh, few, few weeks. And I th but I think another factor uh, plays an important role. Uh, that means the reaction of the people, the reaction of the demonstrators, whether this, uh, this idea of putting down the demonstration by force, I think, I call it, uh, the, the, this, this will not work. It didn't work so far for th about more than three months. Everybody has, everything has been used ag against the demonstration, the repression, uh, uh, kidnapping, uh, assassination, uh, deformation of, uh, of their image, and, and so on. And right. nothing, nothing, nothing worked. And they, they continued. And today, I think, even respective of what they have planned, I think this is a new factor, this factor, this uh, determination, this capacity to, to sacrifice themselves for uh, to maintain the demonstration I think this is an, a political factor or so right. and will take and will should be taken account and if they were to go against this they then the massacres should be the massacres will be committed and I think this is I don't know whether they are ready to commit such uh, massacres uh, uh, whether uh, the political forces and the price the huge political price that will cost uh, to them and to the country right more than 500 protesters protesters have been killed since October, so we hope it doesn't get worse. Raid Jahid Fahmi, good to talk to you. Thank you very much for joining us from Baghdad. Let me uh, broaden out the discussion now. Let's bring in Ahmed Rushdi, who's also in Baghdad. He's the president of the House of Iraqi Expertise Foundation. Douglas Olivant joins us from Washington, D.C. He's a managing partner and the senior vice president of Mantid International, a global strategic consulting firm. And in Sydney, Australia, we have Ali Ma'amouri, a journalist and political science lecturer at the University of Sydney. Ahmed Rushdie, we have the blue hats putting down the protests brutally. Are they at a point where they're doing much more harm than good right now? 
Well, Imran, let's define the successes that made by the demonstration first, and then we can define what's happened uh, by the Blue Hats. Uh, first of all, the demonstration made three main successes. The first one was uh, uh, the, uh, the resignation of Adil Abdel Mahdi. The second one is getting the support of them from the Marja'iya. And the third one, which is the most important one, is that getting a new law of elections, a new, uh, a new committee, uh, a new electoral committee. Now, it is end up with uh, the, the nomination of Alawi. Then Alawi came and said, OK, stay, uh, uh, st keep the, the demonstrations, because I need the demonstrations to, to make together. We're going to make some sort of a power against the political blocks in the parliament to make the reforms. Now, it is not understand well by the demonstrations, uh, by, by the protesters. That's why the protesters refused in the first time uh, Alawi. Then what's happened is that it, it looks like there was some sort of a deal happened between Sairun and Alawi, mm -hmm. and maybe Hadil Amri and Alawi, uh, in way or another about making the new government. Now, uh, uh, and uh, according to that, a reflex happened by the uh, Blue Hats. This is what superficially can be explained. But at the end, the most important thing is that the demonstration is still there. That means even Sairun was inside the <clears throat> demonstrations. It didn't end up when they went out. This is a very important issue. That means those the, the, the right. demonstrations can make another successes, okay. which has happened. They saw Alawi. They stand with him. They okay. sat with him. Right. And he talked to them directly. Is that, OK, guys, let us talk frankly about what's happened after my acceptance inside the parliament about making the government. And I will give you a ministry okay. or two. OK. Doug Ollivant, is there anything Alawi can do, especially in the next couple of weeks as he tries to form a government? that will have people go home and say, OK, we trust you. We're going to trust you to start the process to get us jobs and services and so on. It'll be interesting to see how Muhammad Tafik Alawi approaches the formation of his government. Uh, this is the moment when he's going to have to show strength, because this is the moment where he's most powerful. Um, if he can't put a government together, they're going to have to go back to square one. And I don't think anyone wants to go back to square one. So this is the moment when he can stand up to the parties. This is the moment when he can say, these are the people that I need to carry my agendas forward. Um, they are broadly representative of the nation of Iraq. Uh, they may not be the people that the communities they came from wanted. But here's me, here's my right. cabinet. I'm not going to let you vote on us one at a time and pick off the ones you don't like. This is an all or nothing deal. And if you turn it down, go find yourself right. another prime minister. That's the only way that he can show strength in the short term and show that he's independent of the political parties, of the Mahfaza system, um, and start to Right. Take some steps towards the demonstrators. If he if he forms this government the way the last one was formed and lets his people be picked off one by one by the parties, he's going to be in it's exactly gonna be a the mess. same place right. as predecessor. Okay. Was. So Ali Mamouri, when we look at Sadr, he's pro-government, and he's anti-protest, and then he's pro-protest, and he's anti-government, he's pro-Iran, and he's anti-Iran, and so on and so forth. When we look at the power that Sadr wields, is he the true leader of Iraq right now? Uh, he's a real opportunist, Machiavellist, that just looking for power. If you just look at his career from 2003 until now, he started his career with a crime, killing Abdul Majid al khoui in uh, his first days uh, arriving in Najaf, uh, and after that, uh, forming Mahdi army that was involved with a lot of uh, crimes, and after that, allying with Maliki, breaking out with Maliki, allying with Maliki again allying with a body, breaking out with a body, coming to protest every time uh, to exploit the protest and to use the protest in the appropriate time to get share of power. He had always at least fourth of the power in the Iraqi government, in the ministries, uh, in the parliament, in other parts of the government generally. Uh, but uh, he's actually is a part of failure. He's actually a part of the establishment that protesters are protesting against, uh, but always when there is a protest, he come in and in the appropriate time, he try to abuse the situation and send the protesters to home 
and get the credit all for his part. Right. Ahmed Rushdie, who's more powerful? The Prime Minister Alawi or Muqtada Sadr? Well, I think Alawi is a very clever man. Uh, it looks like he's, he's actually tried to balance power. Uh, try to speak to the demonstrators and in another way make the Sadrist make uh, a threat against the political blocs. Yesterday, he, uh, uh, the man who's responsible for Sarai Salam, the militia for, for Muqtada Sadr, actually made a threat on the political blocs. If you don't agree about uh, uh, Alawi become a prime minister, uh, the protesters will enter the green zone, and we're going to finish all the all all the political blocks. So you can see is that the man who actually Allah is so much clever in a way that he is in balancing between the two powers, the demonstration, the demonstrators, and Sa'irun. And, in, and also, he's near Hadi al-Amri. And let us not forget, he came from Beirut. So uh, you can imagine is that mm -hmm. how much power he has or, or acceptance by Iran also, and also maybe right. by the U.S. And he's already a British citizen. So all those balances is getting in power right. inside his pocket. Compromise by candidate. Time, so day by listen, day. And let, let us not forget also right. is that at the 3rd of March, he should be nominated as right. a prime minister from the parliament. Two and a half minutes left on the discussion. So I want one answer from both Doug and Ali Mamouri. Let me start with you, Doug. How do the Americans view this in the context of the killing of Qasem Soleimani, in the context of the Iran Iranian retaliation, and now the current instability and possible hope with this new prime minister? How are the Americans viewing things? Do they feel like Iraq is veering towards the Iranians more and more? I think the, the Americans are, in our, our classic phrase, being cautiously optimistic about the possibilities of this prime minister. But our expectations are very low. This should be a one-year interim prime minister. His task is to get a new election law passed and have elections done quickly. It can't be a perfect election law. Uh, what we're looking for is a better election law, something that moves the needle a little bit towards more fairness, more accountability, more possibilities for new parties. Again, it's not going to be perfect, but it should be better. And we are looking forward to what happens with the next electoral round under the new election law. So again, our expectation of this government, get a better electoral law that allows the international community to effectively uh, supervise, making sure that Iraq has freer and fairer elections than it's had in the past. Ali Mamouri, modest goals in the short and medium term. Do you share those goals? Uh, look, uh, I just need to comment first that the protesters are not anti-establishment completely. They are very realistic. Their demand is uh, very reachable and accessible. Uh, but none of them has been addressed yet. Uh, first of all, we don't have new electoral law yet, because the law that was passed in the parliament has not sent to the president according to the Constitution, should be sent to the president, so the president signs it, and after that it becomes officially law. We don't have any new electoral law, and the new electoral uh, proposal law that was passed in the parliament is very dangerous, is give more p uh, power to the populist powers like Sadr, like Asaheb, like other PMU forces. We don't have also a good uh, electoral commission. The commission uh, that was formed is formed by uh, Iraqi judges, uh, that is uh, influenced by the head of uh, Iraqi judiciary system. It's against the separation of power. It gives power to the head of judiciary system, Faq Zaidan, who is close to Iran, who is close to Nuri, Nuri Maliki, and is uh, close to the political class. Uh, so far, there is no any real change. If they want really make a big change, they right. need to address uh, these three important uh, things. First of all, new electoral law, fair right. and just. Second, uh, uh, impartial uh, electoral commission and uh, forming the early election very soon. Okay, Ali, I've got to wrap. My apologies for interrupting. Ali Mamouri, Ahmed Rushdie and Doug Olivant, good to have you on the program. And earlier, Raid Jahid Fahmi, pleasure getting all your perspectives.
for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.